Hey guys, Sister Mira, and this is FTB Stone Block 3. Hope you're all having a great day. I'm myself, Fantastic One. So let's go ahead and jump forward to uh, move back into this pack here, right? So in between episodes, I did a bit of stuff. So went ahead and worked on our processor setup because during one of the updates, apparently it broke and I needed to fix it, right? So the main thing that broke was, well, they changed the recipe. They made it so the binding. The binding used to be the item that I put on my conveyor. Now it's the diamond, the gold, or the iron, depending on which processor you're doing. And they moved the binding to the first slot. So that is kind of how that works there. So I went ahead and set up drawers a little differently. Had the binding here. Notice I have some other things filtered down here as well. That's because we're gonna go ahead and automate the watches upflowing time here in a couple minutes. But yeah, they changed the way the processor is done basically. So I had to change that there with the binding. And the binding before I was pulling out uh, down here with filter. Instead, I'm just filtering the iron, the diamond, and the gold. And did my recipes work, right? So really easy to fix, but uh, definitely change, right? So that is a thing. Also, they changed the way the AE2 processors are done as well. So if you already have the inscribers, you're fine. Like you're already kind of grandfathered in. We'll call it that, I guess. Um, yeah, you can still do it with the inscribers, no problem. So the recipes still work. But if you don't have your inscribers yet, you can't craft them anymore. And they have to be done with uh, deploying again, right? So I have the deployer in this step, uh, step here. Then they go through here and have a recipe sequence as well. And instead of smelting at the end, they have to uh, press. So yeah, a little different, but at the same time, pretty cool. And it's kind of neat that uh, they kind of have to do the create thing that we have to as well, right? So I thought that was pretty neat. And uh, if we head down here, I did a little bit of, uh, I guess, pre-crafting. Go ahead and get rid of this guy. I'll be so happy when I get some turrets, I can just kill all these guys automatically. Because like I said, that is kind of my plan here. Just need to do, go and do a little bit of immersive at some point. Anyway, we over here, we got the latex setup that we're going to be setting up because that'll get us into Joshua for going because we're going to end up needing the latex processing. We're going to need a dissolution chamber, a stasis chamber, and a mob slaughter factory to kind of get to the point where we can go and actually get to auto farming the mother, uh, I keep trying to call her starfish, uh, silverfish. Anyway, that is a thing. We also need to do a little bit of ours Nouveau, but it's not too much. Also, went ahead and set up a pedestal here. So this pedestal was just get us acacia wood, acacia wood really quickly, because I think that's the best one for producing latex. So I did that as well. So I think that is pretty much everything I did in between episodes. So not really anything else. Oh, I know I did one more thing actually over here. I just set up our fuel kind of set up again. So in here I have our crafter doing the automatically making us the actual fuel. So it's just doing it right there. Got a roost over here with 16 chickens, just uh, feeding them with coal. And uh, it's just automatically producing. I'm just piping it, uh, I guess, directly into this drawer here. So actually working out quite well. Um, I may turn off my bees soon too. I don't think I really need them anymore. Oh, this one actually spawned the room with us too. But uh, I don't really need them anymore. Like I'm actually making red matter at a pretty good pace rate. I'm not too concerned about the bees anymore. And the only other thing they really give me that are any, that's any use at all probably is um, the, the batteries, right? That kind of up the storage on our power or so. Yeah, I may go ahead and disable them soon because really they're just a distraction uh, at this point. So the first thing we need to do here is go ahead and set up the recipe for the watch blowing time, right? So this is going to be the recipe here. It's not correct. What we need to do is go to like a dark matter block here, hit the alt key and click. We bring up this window here and we set the correct numbers, uh, numbers for the items, right? So we need these all set to six. So let's go ahead and get that done first, right? Because we need to run these through, I guess, six times, right? So you send the clock through goes through one cycle, gets poked a bunch, and it has to do that six times. So it actually takes six of each items, right? So let's go ahead and uh, set that recipe, and that should be good there. Then we need to take that and throw this in the crafter. Then I need to do a little bit of uh, thinking here. But uh, the first thing we need to do is go ahead and uh, grab this, grab the clock, and that'll be filtered to be pulled out and put onto the conveyor. So that'll be the way it kind of works here. Then I think the rest of it's gonna be mostly filtering to kind of get this done, right? So. What will happen is the clock will come here right now. Uh, the six items should end up in each drawer if I kind of order this and then get put into the deployer. It should get poked by the deployers. Then it should get stuck right here, actually, at which point uh, we can actually do our filtering. So let's actually try this out. So if we go ahead and grab ourselves a watch, right? Go ahead and uh, get one of these, right? So do that there. There you go, it's stuck. That's kind of what I was uh, hoping for. Then we need to go ahead and, uh, I guess, Extract this on a filter, right? So I guess import it on a filter. So let's go ahead and go down here, grab ourselves a importer, put it on the bottom. And then we want to set this to a filter here. So we just do that. Make sure it's on a whitelist. I have to end up whitelisting, I guess, all the processors as well. No, we're not doing the importing on the processors here. I don't have to worry about that at all. 
So that's why I'm doing this in a different spot. So I don't have to worry about filters. I remember now. Anyway, that's good. But we'll have to do this, uh, I guess, five more times because I'll have to do it at the six progress, the nine progress, the 12, the 15, and then finally the finished one. I guess that's the way we'll have to do it. And uh, yeah, I'll have to set it individually. You can do it, turn this off too. You can turn off exact mode. It'll pull anything that's labeled incomplete watch. The problem is if you do that, um, it won't actually always get hit by the, uh, what you call it here, the one with the obsidian. It won't always finish the progress, right? So I need to kind of do it this way, a little jank, but it'd be a little weird filtering here. But in the end, I think this will work just fine. Anyway, what else do we need to do here? So I guess the next thing we need to do is now that we have the watch, it's filtered on the first step here, we need to go ahead and have it. So it'll move the watch back into the system. So what we'll do is this here. We'll go ahead and pop you there, have an exporter. Then I'll put the incomplete watch right here. Then I'll turn off exact mode here. And uh, with that, if I put this back in the system now, it should automatically end up back on this conveyor. So let's go ahead and uh, see that happens here. Doing the thing. Oh, I might have to filter that actually. I didn't think about that either. You have to be filtered. So that would have to, where's this gonna go? This is gonna go back down to there. Would there be an easier way of doing this actually? I could do it right there. Huh. I don't wanna have to filter this. Oh, we don't have to filter this as many times now I think of it. What we could do here instead is go to here, do that, and take the metadata off, right? Then it'll just send in anything that is a incomplete watch, right? So just do that right there. And then I should be able to take that watch now, put it here, and that should be stuck back on the conveyor again, hopefully. There we go, we actually have that part done. At which point I think I just have to do this filtering a few more times, then we'll have this uh, kind of automated here, right? So I'd end up uh, with this one here, right? There you go. Then I'd go ahead, uh, I guess, uh, put it back in here. Sweet, I can actually stay on the side now, which is actually awesome. And then I'd have to do it at this stage. So like I said, it's a little jank how I'm gonna to have to do it, but once it's done the first time, I should be able to just order these up and then it should just get done, right? So do that there. Oh, I didn't filter it. I was gonna put it right back through. There you go, that should be up to the uh, 12. So that one's good. Then we go ahead and put it back in here. Goes through no problem. It's actually gonna work out really well. I thought I was gonna hit some problems here, but apparently I am not. Uh, I need to filter that. <laughs> I'm, I'm in a hurry now. There you go. And then the next one should be our finished watch, right? Right there, done. And then hopefully finish watch. And then I should be able to just tell to import the watch blowing time. And that should be good. That should be good right there. So let's take that, let's put that in the system and let's try to actually make one, right? So we have one in there. If I wanna go ahead and actually make a second one, I should be able to just click this now and hopefully it goes through the whole process. There you go. Three, I need to speed up those imports and exporters, but that's fine. Nice. Look at that, we did it. We did it in the same system. That was really my goal. That's actually pretty slick. So we go into our system now, go to watch. We can just auto craft watches of flowing time now. Like they're nothing, that's not bad at all. I really like this window too. This thing's awesome. Like the, how big they made it for things like this. Like that is actually really cool. Like I could do this here and just pin it like that, but look how small that is. I don't want it small like that, but if I just hover over, it's just nice and big. I just, yeah, that's cool. I don't actually have to always bring up the recipe. But yeah, we have the uh, watch flowing time fully automated. Really happy about that. And uh, that is that is a slick little automation, uh, mostly because uh, it fits into the same kind of, um, same area that we were working with before and uh, doing the recipe kind of like completely different. So anyway, pretty happy with that. Let's go ahead and uh, move on to something else here. So the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and uh, get into the latex production. But uh, before we do that, I need some kind of block placer here. So I made myself a whole bunch of these Coke bricks, right? So the Coke bricks are pretty easy to make. But with that, we'll be able to get creosote pretty easily, especially with tech acceleration, right? So we can do this with thermal, but uh, it's just as easy to do with, uh, I guess, immersive engineering using the Coke oven. And uh, this way seems like a much quicker way to kind of get it uh, kind of set up and just going right away. But we're gonna go ahead and uh, set up in this little, kind of little jut here that I'm uh, farming out. This is basically a little three by three structure. So it's pretty simple. Then you just gotta tap it with the hammer. Then you actually get your multi-block, right? Then we'll go ahead and use one of these. Uh, we'll probably use that pedestal right there actually to speed this up as well. Now I'll kind of handle that. So once you have the three by three built, just right click on it, then it's good to go. And then we should be able to uh, go into our system here, grab ourselves some coal, go ahead and pump that there. And then I think in my backpack, I have some cardboard boxes. Hopefully I do. So I can actually move that pedestal here, right? So let's do that. Let's go ahead and uh, move our pedestal. 
Sweet. And then we'll just pop it over here for right now, right there, and speed this up. I don't know how long it's going to take to actually do a full block here. It's pretty slow. You can do like one piece of coal at a time. It'll get you cold coke too, which I guess you could technically use to get you steel and stuff, but not too worried about that. We made this switch over to a thermal option later on. We actually need to do any better of this, but I just need a bunch of the liquid here, which is the creosote. Let's go ahead and grab a jerry can. There you go. That would be uh, what we used to, I guess, bucket all this. I think this thing holds 10 buckets, and you can do crafted, like liquid crafting with the jerry can. It's a cool little thing there. I should have grabbed another uh, watch, too, so I could have double sped this up. But anyway, no big deal. You can't use your pouch either on this, because you have to actually do the center block, too. So that's the thing. So we got five buckets right there. Sweet. And that has five buckets in it, which is amazing. Then we should be able to go to here now. Grab ourselves some oak. Then we should be able to actually make our block placer. The only other block placer I saw that was really easy to make was the one from Industrial For Going, and you need plastic to make it. So it's kind of like a chicken and the egg thing. Yeah, let's go ahead and drop that off. This one works just fine. Just uh, took us a second to get it right, so not that big a deal. Go ahead and do you. Then we need ourselves these metal bars. And then the main thing is this weird wood, right? Where's the recipe? Right there, right? Go ahead and uh, grab a bunch of that. Then we should be able to make our block pacer. Awesome. Okay, so we got that done. Let's go ahead and grab everything we need for our setup for the latex here. We'll go ahead and grab all of you. And then I think we need the acacia. Then we're pretty much done on that. So wait, we're gonna go ahead and put it right here probably. So I'll have a little setup right here. Probably enter tank this around and um, move it around that way. So we'll just kind of use this excess space here. Let's dig this out so we can kind of see what's going on though. Uh, I guess we'll need a couple of those planks down. We'll put down one here, here, and here. This so we can get our machines in place and then kind of figure it out from there. So we'll end up, actually, I might as well get this in place too. I know I need water anyway, so why not uh, get it set up while we're at it? Just thinking about how to do it. So the water will end up here because we'll need water in the setup as well. Then I have some eggs, so we'll go ahead and do that and that. Then I'm pretty sure we could put a cable right in that water. I need to verify that and then pull that out. Yeah, I think that works just fine. So that'll be the water for the system. Then I guess we'll go ahead and grab you here. Then we'll get our three little uh, fluid extractors. These are going to pull the latex out of wood. That's kind of what they do, right? Let's go ahead and do that, that there. You need to spin those all around. We happen to have a hammer here. Engineer's uh, hammer is really good at uh, spinning almost uh, all machines and uh, from any mod, so it's really good at that. Then once we have that, basically what we do is feed it some of the acacia, right? I think if you go in here too, it kind of shows you. No, let's go into the, what's it called here? It's the fluid extractor, right? Give it a use on it. It shows you all the different wood you can actually get liquid from, but notice the acacia is higher, right? I think it's the best one. Yeah, it's by far the best one, right? So you get four millibuckets per kind of cycle here. But it'll kind of go down. Get us a little bit of latex, and uh, that's what we need, right? Uh, we're going to need it in different forms, too. So we need some for plastic as well as some as liquid. So we'll have to deal with that as well. Also, Mr. Pig, please, please go away. Anyway, that's good there. Guess we'll have to have a way to automatically place the wood as well. Because that wood will only produce so much latex that it kind of gets destroyed, right? Can I get you placed kind of up like that? That is uh, good there. Go ahead and grab this drawer as well. That's locked, right? Yeah, let's go ahead and grab you. And we should be able to fit this kind of under here, a little jank too. So let's do that. Hopefully this doesn't waterlog. Hopefully that stops that. Awesome. Go ahead and pop you in there. And then we should have a piece of dirt. And then we can make this thing kind of just automatically feed in here too. Then we don't have to worry about it ever again. Uh, what do I need here? The drawer, right? Let's go ahead and grab you. Pop that there. Then I guess we just need to filter out of this. So we'll just go ahead and uh, do that as well. Then we'll get the rest of the setup here. It's actually going to be a pretty simple setup. But anyway, let's go ahead, do that. Probably go ahead, grab ourselves a wrench here as well. Might be a good idea. Anyway, I need to go ahead and make the actual pipe wrench. I've never made one because you don't actually technically need it. But I always look for a wrench and go, what wrench do I use? And then I panic. Not really panic, but you know what I mean. Uh, let's go into our backpack here. I think I have some upgrades. Oh, I have them right on me. Go ahead and do that right there. Broke that connection too, because otherwise I would have just started... Uh, pumping things in there that I didn't want in there. But now I can go in here and actually filter this, then reconnect it, right? Go ahead, do that right there. Fantastic. This drawer also has a void upgrade on it. So void off any excess wood or saplings that it gets. Uh, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, can I actually target that? There you go. 
And that should start moving all that all in there. So that'll automate the acacia on that, which is uh, pretty rad and pretty simple. And let's think about what else we need to do. So we're going to end up needing the water. That'll be after the next stage of it. These are getting latex now, which is great. And is that pretty much everything I need to do right this second? I had an upgrade here too to throw into this, but I don't think I'd need it just in case. And maybe we're just waiting on a bucket of latex, which we could probably just go ahead and speed up, right? So let's go ahead and grab ourselves. What do we need here? A watch. Like I said, we're going to be using these quite a lot now. So can we do that? I think I did the pedestals as well. So let's go ahead and actually grab one of them, hopefully. That looks good. Then we'll just go ahead and uh, put a floor down here. So that might be nice to have. Sweet. And then we just go ahead and uh, throw this here. You're also going to need tons of latex. So you are going to want to accelerate this or have a robust setup. Uh, I can show you that in a second. There's actually a singularity that uh, requires, I guess, end game singularity that requires you to have a lot of this stuff. We will be able to make uh, upgrades to speed this up even more. We can see here it's actually producing latex at a pretty good pace, which is amazing. But uh, we need, what do we need right now? We need one bucket, I think, to be able to go ahead and make ourselves the latex processing plant, right? With acceleration, that took no time at all. So let's go ahead and grab that. Then we're going to go ahead and uh, head in here, I think, and uh, try to make the latex processing plant. We have to auto craft that furnace. Then we'll go ahead and grab this puppy. We'll also need a gate, I guess, because this thing will need power, but the other ones don't. You can power these too, so you can power these, and I probably should actually, because I think it makes them go faster, doesn't it? I kind of forgot about that. Go ahead and grab uh, maybe two more gates. There you go. Don't know uh, what size I need them on. I don't think it really matters. Well, that makes it, oh my goodness, that's fast. <laughs> I've never seen one of these go so fast before. But yeah, you need uh, you need this here. This is going to be one of the in-game singularities here. You need to make a whole bunch of these add-on processing tier twos, and every one of those takes latex, right? So... You are going to want to uh, produce this stuff, I guess, relatively uh, in a good pace, right? I guess it doesn't have to be this fast, but this is uh, what we got. Uh, where do I want the processing plant? Maybe right here? I need to think about how I want to configure this, too. So we're going to want the latex in two forms. So what I'll do, I'll do this here. Go ahead and put you there. Then I'm going to do a cable here, a cable here. Then we'll go ahead and pull that in there, pull that in there. And that should start getting latex. Great. Probably power this from the front. So let's go ahead and get that done. Then we need to get water in here too. I think we could put it through the same cable. I guess we're going to find out in a second. So let's do that. Go ahead and break you. And did you get water? Oh, I need to set the extract way down there too. I need to get down there somehow. That should have the water in it now. And it's producing the tiny dry rubber we need. That's what we need to actually take to make the actual dry rubber, which gives us our actual plastic. So that handles that. The other thing I want to handle here, I'm going to use this one for liquid latex, I think. I think that's a pretty solid idea. So let's go ahead and grab ourselves a gate, I guess. So we go ahead and grab a gate here. Get one more. I definitely need speed on this. And then probably just a ender tank because we're going to need it for like liquid crafting later on too. So let's go ahead and grab ourselves. I don't know what a ladder is. I have no idea. We need ourselves a ender tank is what I want. Go ahead and grab a ender tank. We'll use this to move it up to the machine to do our auto crafting. We'll have to do it at some point. Uh, I want to make sure that's white too. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. There you go. White channel will be latex. Then I'll never be confused. Let's uh, head down here for a second. I'll have to dig down here a little jank. Hopefully I don't get any water on my head. Uh, that's the aqueous. And I guess I don't know what side I'm going to power that from now. Um, might have to power from behind. Anyway, I'm probably going to change this kind of front of the area too. Probably not leave it the same, to be honest. I'm just going to get rid of this glass right now. Put that right there. And there you go. That'll speed that up. Then I go ahead and put a tank right here. Oh, that's a problem. I guess we have a water channel now. <laughs> Let me go ahead and make a colored uh, ender tank here. There you go. I got a tank up here that's actually filtered now. So I filtered it with this one over here. I just put a bucket of latex. Ender tank uh, actually has the liquid in there, which is great. Need to make sure the latex is set to push out the top. Now the latex that comes in go to this ender tank. I just set it to a channel, so you just kind of use a die on the three little buttons on the top. That'll set a different channel here. I just use the light gray on this one, and uh, that'll be our latex, right? So when I need that to do crafting in the distillation chamber, uh, at a later point, I'll be able to do that no problem. Uh, so you know what? It actually doesn't look too bad like that. I'll probably leave it like that right there. And anything else we need to do here, or are we actually finished now? I think we are pretty much finished. I guess we need a ender chest, so let's grab a ender chest here. Because that'll be how we bring this into the system as well. 
We're just gonna start interchesting stuff around probably. So we do that there, that there. Then we just go ahead, I guess, and grab this right here. Pop that there, and then we'll just set the top to output uh, straight up the top. Maybe go ahead and grab something out too. I'm gonna throw it on the ground for a second so I can actually pick it up. And then we'll go ahead and uh, set a drawer for that. Then we'll be able to set up a recipe to uh, do the smelting for that as well. Because basically I think it takes, what you need to craft this together to dry rubber, nine of them. Then you smelt them up, I think, after that. Then you finally get your plastic. And since I'm setting up our first ender chest here, I usually set up one as my main line. So this white, white, white channel, almost in every pack of play that has these chests, what I do is have one that's main, one for like importing from most of our machines, right? So right now it's full of tiny dry rubber. So what I'm gonna do is uh, speed it up with a bunch of upgrades with a stack upgrade here. And uh, that should be good right there, right? Blacklist, no, we just went on blacklist, right? That'll actually start importing. And that is good. We have a drawer set up with it right up there. I already have it upgraded. It. And then I guess I just need to reconnect our wireless cable over here. And then we should be pretty much good to go, right? Go ahead and uh, do uh, that right there. But uh, moving forward, basically, anytime I do a machine that has like an output for the most part, I'll be piping it through this uh, same channel, right? So one of these enter chests here. So it's just a good way of me uh, kind of controlling what can go into the system. And I try to make sure nothing that goes through this enter chest can't go in a drawer. That way it never just like overfills or drives because that's an easy thing to do if you start to just pumping things into your system, right? So anything that goes to this particular chest has to have a drawer and be coming from a machine that's outside of the system. Anyway, that is done, and I just need to make the recipes here. So I got the recipe set up to be able to make the plastic there, so that's not too bad. I can just craft it up now. It's uh, kind of crafted, and then set over to the netherite furnace, and everything's good in life, right? So I'm producing it at a pretty fast pace, too, so it's coming in pretty quickly. Hopefully that's fast enough for any game. Maybe not. I guess we'll see when we get there, but uh, we got 64 there, which is good. The next thing we need to kind of do is uh, get into a mob slaughter factory, actually, so... With this, we'll get pink slime. With that pink slime, we can actually uh, make our uh, machine frames, I think is what they're called, right? For the stasis chamber, right? Yeah, advanced machine frames and needs plastic and pink slime, right? So we'll have to have all that jazz. What else do we need here? We need, uh, I guess we could just auto craft the rest of that, right? Grab you, grab ourselves the mob slaughter factory. We also need to deal with the grass at our mob farm. So mob farm in our passive is, uh, pretty annoying right and we haven't dealt with that yet i was going to deal with it with a builder but i think we have a better option in this back actually uh what is that band called is it the goddess one this one here i think we're going to go ahead and make one of these can i just uh can i just make one of these i think we could just go ahead and do that then go ahead and grab ourselves a band as well and this should be able to automatically break all the grass which is uh fantastic actually if it actually works for us so let's grab you then we're going to need uh, another one of those pedestals to kind of get this going as well. Not a pedestal. I don't know what that is. Go ahead and grab a pedestal. That should be good there. And this will hopefully handle this aspect of it as well. So what this thing does, accelerates growth of nearby crops. Harvest uh, nearby grown crops. Activates every 0.5 seconds, basically. So we need to uh, kind of get this uh, thing kind of going. Hopefully I don't have to deal with this guy. I just just let me go by. Anyway, let's go ahead and head back here. And see if we can get this thing kind of going here. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and head in here. And then I don't know where to put it, to be honest. Maybe I could just put it like right here. Maybe this will work. Let's go ahead and uh, do that. Put you down. Put you here. And then right click you. Okay. There you go. That actually broke everything. And the only problem is maybe getting all the seeds and stuff in here. So I may have to go ahead and make a trash can to uh, avoid that stuff off. Because I definitely don't want that stuff to be stored up. But uh, that'll handle the grass here and the mobs can spawn it again. Now, I need to go ahead and uh, swap out. We'll probably stop using the mob masher here. We don't need that at all. We're going to have to swap that out for a mob slaughter factory, like I said. Oh, we need a range upgrade. Um, did I get any of those as rewards? I can't remember. So we go to here and go to range. For some reason, I think we did. We got a tier four. That might be too big, but at the same time, it actually work. What do we need here? We would need uh, probably just a range two. I think I actually have this pretty much set up the way I want. Kind of show you what I did here. Let's go ahead and uh, grab ourselves a bunch of these here. I want to get us some jumbo tanks just because they hold like a thousand buckets of fluid, which is not too bad. And they'll be able to deal with the two different liquids we have here for a little bit anyway. So anyway, let's go ahead and pop you here, pop you here. We'll have two different liquids, right? So we'll have liquid meat. So we'll all put that that way. And then we'll send the pink slime out the other way here. So yeah, that'll be just our storage here. Just powering it from the bottom. 
I just use that range four upgrade too. I mean, it'll be a little slower, I think, because it's bigger. But at the same time, I don't think it matters that much. We could speed this up either way. We don't need a ton of the pink slime, I don't think, anyway. So I don't think it matters too much. Uh, we don't need the storage controller anymore either. And I don't have the... I guess I just had a storage controller there anyway. So that is gone. Uh, I got rid of the conveyors as well. Because we don't need those as well anymore. So I don't have to worry about walking in here anymore at all. And it seems to work through the glass. I wasn't sure it was going to work through the glass here. Also, for the seeds that we're going to get when it breaks the grass... All I did was uh, grab a trash can. So I have a trash can here and the using the absorption hopper, just moving the items automatically down. So that effectively handles the farm. We don't really need to do anything else. We may have to do like bulk storage, I guess, later on meat if we don't end up using meat or putting it off. I guess we could use a fluid trash can if we don't end up using it. And then the pink slime, we may end up pulling in the fine storage at some point. But uh, for right now, this is fine. We already got a bucket of it. In fact, we could grab a bucket and probably go ahead and do our recipe dissolution chamber so we can actually make our machine frame right so let's go ahead and uh, get that done there and there you go we got our dissolution chamber so let's go ahead and grab that that's going to probably end up uh over here somewhere so let's go ahead and do that grab ourselves a gate here we'll probably end up automating this thing too because uh it's going to be something we end up using a lot probably moving forward right so let's go ahead and grab this go ahead and, uh throw a nitro on that that should be all powered up now this thing's a little weird with recipes but it's way better than it used to be so it shouldn't be too bad Let's grab ourselves some crafters here. Gonna go ahead and grab two, I guess. We'll just stack them because we have been anyway. Just so it kind of looks the same. Do that and that. Debt will have that many recipes, but uh, I guess you never know. Uh, in here, I should have a way to aim those crafters, right? Let's go ahead and do that. Aim you down, hopefully. Let's do that for now. That for now. And uh, I guess for right now, we'll just bring the cable over. Really jank, but uh, we'll end up with more machines over here anyway. So this cabling will change, but we'll have to power up for the second. And then, of course, red dye. That is very important. You have to have the red dye. Anyway, put that there. This and this. And grab that. There we go. Oh, does it all on the same side now. Okay, and it's going to send the exact amount of liquid, too. Oh, that's actually really good. So we'll have to go ahead and grab an enter tank and store that somehow into the system. Or maybe just a enter tank, and then I could go... Yeah, let's go ahead and grab an enter tank here real quick. Go ahead and grab an enter tank. Let's go ahead and do that. Then we'll have to do like a storage bus on the enter tank for now. If we need a bigger kind of buffer of it, we could do that later on. But for right now, this should work just fine. There you go. Grab you. And then hopefully another one. What am I missing here? Cauldrons. Why do I need cauldrons, man? Go ahead and do that. Go grab that there. Uh, what color dye do we have? Do we have pink? Yes, we do. Look at that. Be uh, matching and everything. Look at that. <laughs> well, I guess I didn't need to do this, do I? I have water tanks, right? Go ahead, do you. Pink dye right there. Pink dye right there. Then we'll be able to, uh, let's go ahead and throw one of these on these jumbo tanks down here. And that should be able to, I think, automatically pull that too? Or can it not? I can't remember. I thought you could auto-pull. Why you know auto-pull? Wasn't there a time when these things used to auto-pull? I know they can, like, uh, yeah, I thought these auto-pulled, man. I guess we'll have to use a fluid pipe here. I guess it doesn't matter too much. Just, uh, I just wanted to auto pull for the sake of auto pulling. Go ahead, uh, pop you here. Do that. And then we'll just go ahead and grab our souls. A wrench. Pipe that in. Now it'll start, uh, buffering. These don't hold much, mind you, but that should be enough. I won't even speed that up for right now, to be honest. We only need to make the one machine frame this second. And then we go ahead and grab, um, uh, this here. And this will probably end up hitting, hidden somewhere. But uh, for this second, I'm just going to go ahead and throw it right here. So we just kind of get it stored and get it auto-crafting. But I'll put it in a wall somewhere. Uh, we'll need an external storage, though, I guess. Let's go ahead and grab external. And down a storage. There you go. Go ahead and craft everything we need for that. And then hopefully we're done, right? So grab you. And I think we just need to set this to liquids. And this is pretty much done, right? So do that there. And there's a way of setting that to liquids. At least there used to be. Fluids. There you go. Seize the 16 buckets. And did I put the recipe in the machine? Can't remember. No, I did not. So I think I have the recipe actually set up now. I had to go ahead and set up another recipe here too. I didn't realize we needed a simple machine frame as well. It is, uh, I guess we're making the third tier of the machine frames, right? So this one takes pink slime. This one takes latex. I had to set up a recipe to smelt down nether brick as well. We don't have nether rack infinitely, but I had like 12,000 just from digging tunnels there. So we're good. So when I set up this recipe too, I tried to grab the wrong gear. Tried to grab like an industrial for going gear, which we shouldn't even be able to craft. Uh, yeah, it looked like these ones here. 
but it was a diamond one. And uh, yeah, it doesn't look like we can actually craft it, but it tried to grab that recipe. I don't I don't know why it did that. But anyway, let's go ahead and uh, see if we can actually make our machine frame now. Oh, I need to uh, fix one more thing here. I think I have excess liquid in this thing. Yeah, we do too. So <laughs> probably have to break this and just void it real quick so we don't have to deal with it. Because like I said, I messed up the recipe once, so not there. Then I guess from the top there, the input, uh, we could do pull. I don't think it matters, but that's fine. And then we have an importer on the bottom. Set up another ender tank here with external storage set for liquids. So hopefully that works out. And uh, let's see if we can actually make our machine frame, right? So let's go ahead and grab. I already made one of these. I want to see if it goes through the whole process too, right? So it looks like it's going to grab everything it needs. It's grabbing the right gear. And I guess we'll try it out. Let's go ahead and do that. And uh, if so, hopefully we have these automated here. So it's getting that one done pretty easily, it looks like. It doesn't look like it's going to have excess liquid too. Because if it has excess liquid, it won't be able to do the other recipe. That's one thing you have to be very careful with these. That you always have the liquid set right. And there we go. We're actually going to get our machine frame and then be able to make our stasis chamber. Which means uh, later on we'll be able to do, go ahead and automate the mother, stir, uh, mother silverfish, right? Which is uh, pretty rad. We still got to do our, our new boat stuff though, right? But that is a big chunk of it there. And, uh, that is really cool. So... We have that automated move forward. Uh, we can make those machine frames whenever we want. Just need to get everything speeded up as usual. So yeah, that is uh, really cool, actually. That is pretty rad. Just uh, need to go ahead and move these probably somewhere in the wall, probably behind our drawer wall or something. And then, yeah, we're pretty much good to go. So it seems like everything's working great. Like, I haven't ran into any issues at all. I checked everything. Probably going to set up bulk storage for these fluids probably in the next video as well. We'll get that done alongside with the uh, mother silverfish, uh, I guess, farming as well. So we'll kind of get that done, which uh, should be pretty easy. But it seems like everything's working the way I want. I will end up throwing some upgrades in here. So these uh, upgrades here, I guess you go to uh, speed and industrial. I think we can uh, actually make these pretty easy now, right? So yeah, they just take latex, sugar, some gears, and some other stuff. I can make the tier twos. And I think there's a couple other ones like efficiency. And then there's processing as well. I'll probably end up doing those by myself between episodes. But I can actually automate all those recipes pretty easy now. Get these all sped up especially this one here like i said it's gonna be for singularities too so i want to get up to uh a speed at which uh hopefully you can keep up with endgame right but anyway i think i'll go ahead and uh, wrap this one up here i think we've made pretty good progress today come back in the next video and uh hopefully hopefully uh get to the automation of the mother silverfish so that is the plan and uh i should say definitely because uh that will be what we get to but anyway i'm gonna go ahead and wrap this one up here as always if you guys like this video please hit that like button Really liked it. Hit that subscribe button. It is always appreciated. Well, you guys all have a good one. See you guys in the next video. Later.